The APCO Bassmaster Elite at the St. John's River kickoff for the season of 2021 for the Bassmaster Elite Series. Welcome to the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon. I am Tommy Sanders here with Ronnie Moore. And Ronnie, the St. John's is so great, a vast fishery, and it gives us so many different looks. As we go from angler to angler, sometimes it looks like we're going to a different part of the country. Very few lakes in the country and rivers are dubbed a legendary fishery, but the St. John's River is just that. One of the most visited places we have on the Bassmaster Elite Series. And every year, Tommy, whether weather plays a factor, vegetation, the high weights, the low weights, every year it's different in the St. John's. But you can't have a St. John's River event without Palatka, Florida. And it takes us to our local guy, Cliff Prince, the one who knows the most about this place. And Tommy, five top 20s out of six events here for Cliff Prince. And he seemingly does it his own way. No matter what the rest of the field's doing, he does it his way. And we saw that poked his head into some man-made canals this week, also did his shell bar deal in the mornings, threw in some top water as well, a little bit of sight fishing, but Cliff Prince did it his way to another top 10 here at the St. John's River. Don't you come off there, you sap sucker. Hell yeah! That's what I'm talking about. Oh, give me some knuckles on that one, Hammer. That's what we need right there, five, just like that. And I'll stand out here and let it rain all day. What I'm talking about. Come on with that. Oh, I can't believe he hasn't won one yet, Ronnie. I mean, he, he is really the only true hometown favorite here, a Palatka native. We discussed it on Bassmaster Live. Could he be the best local Elite Series talent for a specific fishery? That much pressure, that much consistency, five top 20s out of his six Elite events. And his six Elite event wasn't that bad. Barely missed the top 50 cut that year. But the St. John's River is a river, and that is where Cliff Prince lives every time we're here. But one place we see hardly factor, Rodman Reservoir. It's, it is a man-made reservoir, and our day three leader, Patrick Walters, had 26-7, the biggest bag of the tournament there, and he did it with his electronics. Fishing a little bit offshore, seeing fish on his grab over standing timber, another type of cover at the St. John's River with that wood. Yeah, basically doing in his big uh, wipeout victory on Lake Fork last year, doing pretty much the same thing. Re like you say, relying heavily on those electronics. Patrick Walters with a big lead going into the final day. That'll pull. That'll pull. We're getting close. We knew there'd be a lone survivor or two from Rodman Reservoir. It was just churning out good ones, and the temperature was getting right. Walters was the lone survivor there. Having to lock is a, is a difficult task on a fishery like this, but a place, a staple that we expect to factor here, Lake George. It's been kind of through ups and downs. Drayton Island's been good, lack of eelgrass. So what do the structure do the bass have? They have cypress trees, and Greg Hackney found a stretch of trees all to himself. During the spawn, it was kind of a place that reloaded, and Tommy, he really had it all to himself. There. Absolutely, and, and literally miles and miles of cypress trees as well. Greg Hackney, though, an acknowledged master at this kind of fishing in this type of environment right here. We're look, looking at footage from day number three where he really hit him on. Mm. There's his girlfriend. Boy, he's a pretty thing. It's a fine specimen of a Florida bass right there. You know it's a special fishery when through ups and downs of weather, hurricanes, droughts, different things that Florida deals with, that a fishery can change as much as it has, and so many structures can factor. And one of the structures at the bottom of the, or the south end of Lake George Brian New found lily pad fields, and that was really the only vegetation type structure, but it paid off for him. I don't like this. I'm gonna go back out. Maybe I do like it. Woo! Yeah! Yeah! It takes a lot to get me excited, boys and girls. I'm Reason for excitement on that day. He had a game plan for the first three days. He did not waver from. He was going to catch a limit on shell beds, very close to the takeoff in Palanca. But on this day, the final day, he scrapped that entire thing. He said, if I'm going to win, I've got to do all my work done. Yeah. Starting in sixth place on the final day, big bags are happening every single day at the St. John's. He's got to have 20 pounds, so he sells out where he was getting all of his major fish and the coals. He went down to the south end of Lake George and ended up having one of the biggest bags of the tournament, 26-4, coming back to win it. But one aspect, Tommy, the longest run of the week. 
going past Lake George through Lake Dexter and Woodruff over to Spring Garden Lake. Yeah, he was the story of the first two days of competition, the veteran Gary Klaus coming down here, making a big, big risk, giving up a lot of time, a long run time down there and back, but it paid off on day number one. Mmm. That's a giant. Oh, that's the big one, dude, we won't. That may have been that one we saw a while ago. I think that's the one we saw a while ago that, oh, that's a big one. <laughs> I really think that's the one that we saw swimming across there a while ago because I kind of spooked it out and I just messed around here a while. Oh my God, look at that. Look at that. 25 pounds in an hour's fishing time, Ronnie. That was amazing. Took the lead, big lead, in fact, on day number one. You said there was a risk in the St. John's River. So many. Do you lock? Do you make a long run? Do you fish for uh, in a crowd of people? Gary Klaus found a place all to himself. And no, it didn't pay off with a win, but it paid off with his best elite finish, a top 10. You can't win unless you make it to Championship Sunday, and he did that. And that's uh, so many avenues on the St. John's River to fish and to do it. And we just saw five of them on Humminbird Unlock the Lake. Well, once again, here in 2021, the St. John's River does not disappoint, giving us a lot of looks, a lot of different ways to get there, and that's what we're looking for every time.